All right, first things first, I need my mill extent from my MPAS 2.0. And then I want an SS25. I'm going to want my CHA hub from my tactical delta loop. I need some way to get my signal from the antenna into my radio, so I want this blank adapter. And I am a banana plug ground radial guy, so ground radials with a banana plug, which means we need a banana plug radial hub. What else do we need? And the reason I did this antenna arsenal wall originally was to look cool, and it does, but it's constantly being reconfigured with gear that I use. So I'm going to need four shackles, I'm going to need some S-clips, and I'm going to use some ground stakes, and then I'm going to want cam jams. Let's see what we're up to today. So what exactly are you up to today, Bob Hughes, KD4, BMG, HOA ham? <laughs> well, changing things up. If you own two antenna kits, you probably have more than two antenna deployments. And I don't mean that each kit has multiple deployments, which it likely does. What I mean is mix and match your gear and you'll be amazed what you come up with. The Empass 2.0 antenna from Chameleon Antenna, their kit, was one of the first major investments I made as an amateur radio operator years before I became a YouTuber. This military extension is from that. The SS-25, well, I introduced the SS-25, I don't know, a year ago? It's already uh, revolutionized the way people deploy portable. And this is all about portable deployment because I'm going backyard portable in a few moments. This hub is from a tactical Delta loop. So I have taken gear from at least two antenna kits and then bits and bops from several others. The mill extent is about eight and a half feet long, and SS25 is 25 feet long. Hmm, do the math. You have about 33 and a half feet, which if I'm not mistaken, is right close to a quarter wave on 40 meters. You may not have realized it, but you either already have or almost have everything you need to have a quarter wave 40 meter vertical antenna for portable use. So the ground spike is going to go into the ground first. It's going to get a puck for banana plugs and a blank adapter. Once we extend this to its eight feet, then it's going to connect to the blank adapter. Eight feet up goes this hub. And on top of this hub will then go the SS25. Again, you'll see this backyard portable, but now all of a sudden I have a 33 and a half foot portable deployable quarter wave 40 meter antenna. Well, how does this work? Well, you take yourself some shackles and this has four locations on it. So it's more than just for the tactical Delta loop. And you can put your shackles on this. And now all of a sudden you have some place to put some cordage so that you can put this into the ground with ground stakes. So again, this goes on top of the fully extended mill extent and then the SS25 goes on top of here with a 3 8 by 24. You follow? You'll see it backyard here in a couple of moments. Then I'm gonna take some cord and I'm going to tie it off to the shackles and then I'm gonna use actually S-clips, tie some loops in the end of this and put my S-clips here on the shackles the cord goes down to the ground, goes to my ground spikes. So I've already done the deployment. I'm just uh, introducing it here to you now so you can see all the components before I demonstrate how to do it in the back. Spoiler alert, don't waste your time using really thin um, cordage. That was a huge mistake. So I'm going to do that in high speed once I come to that, because that's just a blooper reel for 15 minutes. You're not going to suffer through that. You'll see it in 15 minutes condensed down to 10 seconds. And the results of this, I was pretty happy with that. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo Mike Golf. Five nine Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Tampa. Have a nice, Seven three, have a blast, friend. Right with you, 
it. Too late. Bravo, Sierra. Romeo, Sierra, it. Okay, now that you're kind of picking up what I'm laying down, you know what I'm going to do here. I'm going to lay everything out and do it what I consider the hard way. For me, I would assemble the whole thing and including my ground spike and stick it in the ground after I stood it up because I have soft soil, I can just push it down in. Most of you can't do that, so I'll do it the hard way, probably the way you have to do it. So I'm just gonna lay out the parts of the system, my military extension, my cha hub is gonna be somewhere around here. I've got my four strings for support here spread out around the ground spike. I've got my ground stakes, my radials, and I already have my coax out here because I was testing another antenna for the last two weeks. So I already have my uh, coax connected to my blank adapter and my puck. So that was already out here in a piece of 75 foot long coax going back to the utility box that goes into the house. So. I think I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up here and move my way back. And somewhere about here, we're going to need uh, my SS25. Well, let's go ahead and let's get this set up since I am here. Everything is going to get laid out on the ground and then stood up. When you do something like that, you do want to really be careful as you lift up your whip, especially as... Uh, you're dealing with the joints at each section. You don't want to put any undue stress on them. There we go, SS25 ready to go. And my flagpole, yes, my flagpole will be within a quarter wave of my 40 meter signal. So I could get some interplay with that and I'm not gonna do anything about it. That's just reality. So let's go ahead and give you a close up of everything that you're interested in. And see if you can duplicate something like this at home. So you might uh, not have this already pre-assembled as I do. I already did, like I said, because I was doing some other testing, you might have to get your ground spike into the ground first with a rubber mallet, then put your radial puck and then your blank adapter. Use a rubber mallet if you must pound these into the ground. I'm using the 21 inch ground spike because of the height that I'm going to have here. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting together my military extension along with the hub and then the SS25. Now these sections here are machined with a very tight tolerance because you're actually transferring your signal on this military extension. And that's why the tolerance here is very important. It's why Chameleon pays attention to stuff like this. It's also why it fits together very tightly. So we're gonna leave this right about here. Just once I tilt it up, it's going to go into um, my blank adapter. Actually, you'll see in a second how I'm going to pull that off because it's not always that simple to do. So let's go ahead and get, I should have put these four strings up here closer to the hub because I'm going to get them attached before I stand this up. And this string, I think I mentioned earlier, this is garbage string. I would be using better string if this were a park zone the air or somewhere that I couldn't afford to lose time. It might get tangled up. I would definitely use something a little bit better quality, but this is what I had, so that's why I'm going to use it. So I have the female threaded end here of my military extension, and now I'm going to put the cha hub on here first. And I've already inserted the shackles. Always be sure when you're screwing these together that your, your bottom half and your top half are aligned so you don't cross thread anything. That's the last thing we need here is this cross threaded. 
All right, now this is where I said I might get a little bit messy because I'm using these clips with string that I don't know if it's gonna get tangled or not, but you know what, we'll worry about that in a couple of minutes after we get this up in the air. <clears throat> Try to keep it separate here if I can. And this really is not a long setup if you kind of plan ahead and get everything laid out. Of course, if you're not trying to work with multiple cameras, like I always am, then it's even easier yet. Yep, these are definitely gonna get tangled. So do choose, you know, some actual good cordage to get these up and secured. Not this really thin stuff that uh, I just pulled out. I don't know if this is a uh, string that was left over from a garden job or from uh, laying some block or brick, but it's not ideal for this. It'll hold. I'm not concerned about it holding. I'm just concerned about how difficult this is to get all put together. Okay, so I've got my SS25. I've got my hub. I've got my cordage ready to go. And my blank adapter is in the ground. So here's what we're going to do next. This is what I told you is, you know, the hard part, which for me is really the easy part. If I was doing this normally the way I would put it all together, including my ground spike, I would start back there, lift the whole thing up and push my spike into the ground because you saw how easy my spike went into the ground. Since you probably won't be able to do that, take your military extension, you have everything together, come to the first section, break the section apart, pull it towards you, get that first section vertical, and now go ahead and screw that into the blank adapter. Yeah, you're putting some twist on the cordage inside of there. You can take care of that later when you disassemble this. So right there, I am tight, okay? I'm tight in my blank adapter. Now I'm gonna to go to the other end and I'm gonna slowly lift up. And this is gonna separate here, that's not a problem. But once I lift it up and get this portion vertical, then I'll slide down over top of this. You wanna be really careful about this. You don't wanna put any undue stress, even on a 17 foot whip. We all know that these sections in between are the most fragile. So the sooner I can get this up in the air, well, it looks like it's going to catch there on the top of section one. That wasn't really what I was going for, but it's doing the trick. Okay, we have success. Now slowly bring that down over top of that section, and there you go. <laughs> what do you think of that? We've got 24 feet up in the air, and you can see, yeah, this wants to have some stabilization. So let's get these spread out. So here's 15 minutes of my life I'll never get back. And I'll tell you right now, don't use really thin cordage to get this job done. It didn't work well with my cam jams and it tangled up. I won't push you through that torture. We'll talk about SWR, we'll take a look at FT8 and then Whisper, and then I'll give you my final thoughts and other tips on how to deploy this in your backyard or POTA or wherever you wanna take this portable antenna setup. SWR is just under two to one on the digital side of the band and just over two to one on the single sideband phone side of the band. I'm not one of those people that freaks out anytime I get under two to one. I'm okay with it. I won't keep working at it for 15 minutes at a time. I'll try to get it as close to one to one as possible, but if I don't make much progress, I will just go ahead and key up and operate. My antenna was likely a little bit long here and rather than go back outside in the heat, and take it down and shorten it up by maybe close to a foot. I just went ahead and operated on single sideband phone. You could see the signals were really coming through strong. For FT8, you can also see that I had great success in making contacts at will. PSK reporter showing me being heard as well as hearing quite well.
Whisper is an indicator and it lets you know whether or not you're just being heard. It doesn't always tell you whether or not you have a good antenna. I've been doing Whisper maps long enough that I know that this is a phenomenal 40 meter antenna. I absolutely had a killer antenna with this quarter wave 40 meter vertical. So what do I recommend now that I've actually done this deployment for the first time? I learned because this was my first deployment, so you got to watch me make some mistakes. Let me tell you what they were and what you could do differently. The one mistake I didn't make was look at my antenna wall and go, what do I have here that I could turn into a quarter wave 40 meter vertical? And I realized I had the parts to do that. Look at all of your antenna kits, regardless of brand, and see what options you have to do different deployments than maybe what the manufacturer had said. You have two different kits, three different kits, some miscellaneous parts that you purchased. Think through what you can do. Now, the first thing I would tell you not to do is don't use that really thin cordage that I used. Use good power cord. Um, I just used that because it was left over out in the garage in a bin and I thought, mm, I should probably use this up. We've had it around for a long time. Big, big mistake. Not only did it tangle, but my cam jams didn't like that cord that was that small. It kept the antenna up through the night, but I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to leave it up long like that. And it took me 15 minutes to untangle it all and get it into the ground stakes. Don't do that. The second thing would be if you have soft soil like me, go ahead and assemble the whole thing, including the ground spike, and then start at the far end of your telescope uh, whip, your 25 foot whip, and slowly lift it up, pick it up and push it down into the ground. I can do that in my soil, and I would have had a lot less bouncing on the far end of that SS25 had I done that. And that's the other thing, right? Watching that on film, I realized how much I was bouncing around the far end of the SS25. Our telescoping whips, by nature of how they're manufactured, there is weakness at the joints. It doesn't really matter what brand you have, there is. It's the nature of the design. So you want that to bounce as little as possible. And now that I know that's what I was doing, I would be a whole lot more aware of that the next time I did this deployment. If you have a second pair of hands, you know, get someone to help you if somebody is nearby, and that would help you to keep some stability on the far end of the whip. It is 34 feet long, you know, so you do need to take some care in how you put that up. I think the final way you could do this, it would work at home and wouldn't really work for a POTA. I guess it could be for field day if you wanted to take some extra gear with you. But if you left the telescoping whip, the SS25 collapsed, but did put it on top of the mill extension and had a step ladder, you could get that mill extension down into the blank adapter and the ground spike, then get a step ladder out and go up to the you know eight, nine feet level and then take your SS25 and put it up section by section. That would be an alternate way to do it. but now you need a step ladder. Those are just some of my thoughts. If you have some ideas on how to deploy this better than I did or different from the suggestions I gave, let us know in the comments below. Look at all your kits. Start thinking about how to adapt and come up with some new ways to deploy. Hope you found this useful and a little bit fun. Talk to you soon. 73.